Hello, welcome to another Toneless Landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and the painting I'm bringing you today is called Hillside View. It's an 8x10, and it's another sepia. Um, I think I, I think the one that's up there now is not. I know I put a color run up recently, so y you know I can still paint with the color, right? Uh, it's sepia's just been good for me lately, and uh, yeah, I've been I've been actually not to you know take too much of your time, but I've been actually painting the exterior of my home here, so that's why I'm a little late with this video. It's been pretty disruptive to my regular um, you know work, uh, the painting I like to do, which is landscape painting. But you know, it's good that it's getting done. It needs to be done. Anyway, enough of that. Let's talk about this painting. So we're working on a board. Um, actually, this is like a bit of... Um, it's a bit of uh, hardboard. Um, and it very much looks like... Uh, sorry for all the ums. Uh, very much looks like I rubbed a good portion of some pigment over it to give it a, a bit of a tint. Alternatively, it pro actually more likely it's... Um, some cow reply or it's laminated mdf which would be laminated with cow reply um that's probably more likely because uh that board is like very light in color and i really don't like painting in light uh, light colors and i guess that's something we can maybe chat about a little bit um why is that you say i i've always painted on white you say well the reason i don't like it is let's say you're doing all this beautiful gestural brushwork right um, and, and in the process of being gestural, you know, your edges aren't meeting completely. So you've got bits of white peeking through. Now that's not as important, I would think, uh, say in some impressionist work, it's very light and bright. In my work, it wouldn't work at all. So, uh, this color that you see me painting on top of is going to be peeking through in all those areas where white would have normally been peeking through. And, uh, that's called a ground color if you're, you know, in, in uh, wondering um, what that would be called. It's called your ground color. And a lot of times that refers to watercolor where they use that expression, but it totally applies to oil painting as well. It's the color of the surface would be your ground color. Uh, I like brown. I like brown. You can tell I like brown because I'm always painting on brown. Uh, sometimes I do reddish brown or I might do orangey brown or I might do greeny brown or whatever color that hardboard is which is hard to say I really like that color it's always some kind of brown or red you know brown red whatever uh, and that's the reason why so uh, now the color that I did my underpainting with very much looks to me like it is I'm gonna say raw umber and you go well it looks pretty red Mike I don't know yeah but you gotta remember that the board color itself has got a lot of red in it so I would go with raw umber although possibly burn umber but I don't think so um, and in this case a lot of times you see me do my underpaintings with black um, in this case I'm doing the raw umber and uh, I'll go in with black and do the darkest bits Ah. Uh, Okay, sorry about the uh, interruption there. It's my mate uh, helping me paint the house. And boy, just hailstones just came down. <laughs> it's not even that cold. So it must have been cold wherever it was uh, raining from. Um, anyway, uh, so you see me uh, now, the white here, titanium white. Probably, I think uh, uh, it's looking at me like I put a little bit of uh, raw sienna in there. Um, and of course, the raw umber. And the raw umber kind of playing the role of the cloudish gray and I recall painting this I was like sometimes I feel a little lost you know and maybe you know that feeling too and what I would say is that um, just keep painting don't worry about it don't start getting all tight and tweaky we don't want that we don't want your tight tweaky painting you know you may be very proud of the uh, hard work you put in but odds are that the, you will have choked all the life out of the expressiveness out of it and the thing is like every painting kind of is its own thing that's that's the other thing i think a lot of times amateurs come in and they um 
amateurs come in and they think uh, they have a plan, you know, uh, or they don't have a plan, but they have an idea based, say, on their previous success that things should go a certain way. And that's very prevalent, I, I would think. I know it was for me anyway, where I think, ah, oh, I finally figured this out, you know, and then you're going to try and apply that to everything you do. And th that's okay, but it's also okay that sometimes things start moving away from you and going a different direction and that's maybe even better if you think about it just kind of go with it and let it happen and this is one of the beauty aspects of doing lots of paintings so if you do a lot of paintings say try and get one done every day um, you're going to cover a lot of ground you're going to get uh, really good in a hurry okay uh, that's one reason I'm working here 8 by 10 today uh, in this video and it didn't take, I think, the full-length video. Oh, by the way, full-length video in the members area. Click the link below this video. It's uh, six bones a month, and uh, uh, you can exit any time, right? You can come tip in, tip out. Um, this would be a good one to watch, though, because, you know, it's all it's all done in a hurry. And so some of the videos that in that members area might be seven hours long. <laughs> Because they're live in the in the studio, so bigger paintings, more involved paintings. Some studies say I've done after George and S, or some things like that, were, were really tricky and required a lot of time. Um, it's all live and it's all very uh, educational. If you are uh, somebody that learns through insight and watching somebody paint, and that I think is one of the best ways to learn. No doubt you can pick up a lot from these little 15-minute babies and. Uh, well, heck, for most of the life of the channel, that's all I put up was sped up videos. But uh, I think there's a lot of value in the live session as well. Um, so what you see me doing now is putting in my darks with the old Mars black. And now a lot of people like to get into the chromatic blacks, and there ain't nothing wrong with it. Um, chromatic, black, chromatic black wouldn't have looked so, so great on this brown, though. I mean, it would have had that kind of icky, greeny quality. That's not icky in most circumstances but it would have been icky here just straight up black and why the mars black you say why are you using mars black what's so special mars black is an opaque black and your ivory black your bone black is uh very transparent um so uh if you were say uh, we're pivoting off of mostly raw umber in this painting it really is helpful to have an opaque black uh whereas <coughs> if i have don't bark Um, if you have a transparent black and a transparent like color that you're pivoting off of, in this case it would have been raw umber, uh, it would have been a real struggle, more of a struggle. It's already a bit of a struggle uh, dealing with all that transparency that's uh, inside the raw umber. Also, uh, I'd like to call out to you how I did a little bit of a fade thing in the those, those hills in the back. Give you a little tip too, because you've been kind enough to get eight minutes into this video. Here's your tip. You ready? You want to treat these uh, hill shapes in the back, treat them like clouds, but without a fluffy edge, right? You want a soft edge, you want an appropriate edge. You can you even slow down. You can, by the way, here's another tip. You know, you can slow down these YouTube videos, fish around in that menu uh, in the bar right at the bottom of the video, and you, you can slow them down quite a lot, I think, by at least two maybe even four so well, the resolution on these is quite nice so you should be able to, to, to scope things out pretty good yeah anyway um notice how i'd like to bring a little bit of a gradation you know moving over from the uh, the tree forms that are in the middle distance you know uh you don't just want to have it a solid block of uh, color you want to get some air in there and that's um, why i approach it that way and um, keep them simple that's the other thing and you, your reference may may have a ton of like little trees or something back there on that ridge you're thinking oh man I'm gonna try and paint all those but what you'll find is in the process of trying to paint those tiny trees in the distance uh, that it's going to be an area of your painting that starts calling too much attention to itself and uh, there are times and in pla in places where you maybe want to slow down and apply a bit of painterly attention um, that wouldn't be one of them because you know we can see it's a hill we can see it's in the distance we can see see and feel the air and light 
and that's what we want you know oh the other thing i probably point out we got a minute or so left you see that little like body of water just below the hill there um there was like a little snaky river that was way way further in the distance and i decided no nah, it's too tweaky too far i um instead of like having a bunch of shadow in that area i pretty much invented like a little body of water we don't know it could be a lake it could be a part of a river um, you'll perceive it as water though in a second because it's basically the same sort of color and value as the sky so don't never hesitate to to invent a little bit of water here and there and I don't get all worried about what's reflecting what or any of that because if you pay attention to nature sometimes things there's reflected like a mirror surface other times things are it's pretty vague all you can tell is that it's light and it's been hit with um, you know the same color that's reflecting the sky you know uh, you could get tweaky with that stuff I don't really bother and I don't think my paintings suffer too much for it anyway thank you so much for joining me today I really appreciate you coming by and uh, you know if you uh, feel like it tip on over to my uh, my uh, web page there are some paintings for sale there you know pretty good pretty good paintings pretty good prices I know I need to fresh up that store however if there's any painting of mine you see another channel that you really love and you'd say oh I'd love to own that um, go to my website you can find my email or contact form reach out let me know and uh, let me know your uh, you saw it on the YouTube I'll make you a special deal yeah anyway until they come back do me a favor do me a solid take good care of yourself and all your loved ones God bless you and stay out of trouble.